Ladies and gentlemen, boys and well, welcome to episode 90 something, 98 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. Um, recording this one on Sunday as I only just got home yesterday, so um, I just didn't, didn't get around to doing it because I've been in Adelaide for the, for the past week. Um, I've been in Adelaide. What have I been doing? Uh, I've been getting serious about this weekly video shit. Um, because Luke and I have a whole month off radio, we both were like, all right, let's get serious about this video shit. Let's pump out all the fucking sketch ideas that I have. So what I did was, uh, Luke and I, we flew to Adelaide to stay at the House of Racker with the Racker Racker Boys. Um, they're giant on YouTube. They think they've got like 4 million subscribers. We met at VidCon and we th- and we were like, hey, we should fucking collab. And uh, I don't know, it's just a place where there's heaps of other creators like Fairburn Films are there. Um, the Royal Stampede are there and shooter Alex Williamson is there. So we, th- we all, f- Luke and I flew there to film, we stayed there for four days to film as much shit as possible. So, um, basically what I'm trying to do is because sketches are such a bitch to organize to get all of the characters that you need played in one place, that's really hard. So it's almost like the effort to organize one sketch isn't worth getting just one video out of it. Do you know what I mean? So instead of you know, meeting up once a week and doing one fucking video, we were just like, oh, we'll just go to a place that always has six people and that way we can smash out like, you know, six videos in a day. And that's exactly what we did. So we flew down to Adelaide um, and I filmed six videos for myself personally. So that's six weeks of content coming at you. Uh, I think Luke, smashed out a similar number but in total I think I may have been in about 15 videos including mine so uh the next couple of months are going to be uh an assault on your news feeds of just shit that I'm in but uh I'm really happy really really enjoyed myself doing that because I think this is my plan so essentially starting now I've got six videos in the bank so that is that is what is that a month and a half of just shit and I'm still going to try and at least film one video a week as well. So my goal I'm thinking this is the plan. I think I'm going to release uh one big video so either bi-monthly bull or lu review and then a sketch as well until the comedy special. Try and put out two videos a week until the comedy special drops and then when that one when that drops move down to once a week just because I don't know I want to be pumping out as much shit as possible before the special drops um I don't know so people fucking download it that's the plan anyway but we'll, we'll see that might change I mean that might be too many videos I don't know the point is guys it will at least be weekly for a very long time because I now have you know six fucking videos which is six weeks um, and then that doesn't include Lou Review or Bi-Monthly or the new series that I'm starting, uh, on Tuesday. So, yeah, that's, so expect a whole bunch of new content from me. But yeah, I really enjoyed Adelaide. Uh, I love Adelaide. I don't know why people shit on Adelaide. It's one of my favorite places to go just because everyone there is nice and every girl is, uh, the most beautiful girl you've ever seen. And it's, it's this weird thing where it's, it's, it's almost like the only thing to do in Adelaide is work on your appearance and absolutely smash your personality. Like they're the most, they're the nicest people and the most beautiful girls in the country. And every other comic or touring musician I've spoken to is like, yeah, it's so weird. Adelaide girls are at the same time, incredibly gorgeous and really nice for some reason. Like, in Melbourne, if you see a girl that's even, like, above a six, she's just, like, a giant cunt. <laughs> but in Adelaide, you'll you'll bump into an 11, and she's, like, a charity worker. <laughs> she's, like, helping out fucking child burns victims. So, yeah, I don't know what that, what that is about Adelaide. But, yeah, thanks very much to the Racka Racka boys for having us. We really enjoyed um, our time. And, and, man, they live in a full-on mansion it's 
something stupid like three stories. There's got to be at least, at least six bedrooms in there. Two bathrooms. The backyard is gigantic. It's it's a full on proper mansion, but it's run by boys. So the outside of it is like, fuck, these guys are killing it. These guys live in a mansion. And then you walk in and it's fucking Afghanistan. (laughs) There's like six men and living there or some, I think it's like at least four dudes just living there. And they are way more focused on making videos than living a sustainably clean lifestyle. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like, the place is a fucking shithole on the inside because no one cleans up anything. Um, but I'm not complaining. I just, I, But the thing is, it doesn't affect you at all because the, the place is so big that I remember one day I was editing in one room and I thought to myself, fuck, something smells like shit. And instead of figuring out what was making that awful smell... And then putting that in the bin, I just changed rooms. <laughs> I just moved to the other side of the house and I was like, oh, this area smells at least a little bit better. So, yeah, I mean, that's 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 essentially how, uh, that's what happens when it's just four dudes in a house that requires a lot of maintenance. You're just going to end up with a house that smells like shit in some areas until they run out of areas and then, you know, it's like, oh, fuck, we got to clean at least one of the rooms so we can stay in here and avoid all of the other ones. Um, but yeah, I was in heaps of videos. I, I'm, in a, I'm in a video with Shooter coming up. I'm in uh, uh, one of the Racka Racka Boys vlog uh, and another video. I don't know. I'm in fucking heaps of shit. I'll be sharing it all over. And uh, the main thing is, though, I got six of my videos done and because we have the month off I think I have about six more ideas that I want to execute as well so I'm hoping to end January with like three months of content just in the bag so if even if I get too busy to do a lure review or something you will at the very least be getting a sketch once a week so I'm thinking from yeah, basically from next week, I'm going to try and be putting out two videos a week. But we'll see. That might change. There might be too much. I might do one video one week and then two videos another week and then one. But I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to figure it out. You guys let me know if I'm spamming you with too much shit. But that's the that's the plan. Either way, one video a week from now. I'm serious about this shit. And I don't know. It just, I'm just, I've just been so fucking shitty since I was so ready to do weekly videos uh, and I announced it during Lou review and then all that shit with my grand passing away happened and it was like, fuck. And then it's funny. Like there's a whole bunch of comments on that YouTube video going, Oh, he fucking lied. He said he was ready for weekly videos, but they don't listen to the podcast and they don't see me on Facebook. So they don't, so to them, there is no legitimate excuse. I'm just a fucking liar, but I don't know. I wasn't going to make a giant vlog being like, uh, this is why I can't do my shit. I'm a fucking whinger. Give me likes. So Whatever, let them think what they think. Um, oh, also, I would like to, um, while I'm thanking people, thank you very much to Danny and Michael Philippou for the hospitality. Um, man, it was the weirdest shit. Because they vlog, right, and they vlog the outside of their mansion, and and the mansion is so, like, iconic. Like, if you see it, you, you fucking know, oh, that's where they live. Kids were rocking up, like, every day to the house. Um, and the Racker Boys didn't mind at all. I was just fascinated by it. Like, kids would fucking knock on the door and be like, Hi, is is Danny and Michael here? And then they would go to the door and, and say hi and get photos, and they were really nice to them. Dude, if people were knocking on my door and asking for photos, I would, I would have a bucket of piss <laughs> ready, like hanging from, like, just above the door. And if I opened it and someone was like, hey, Lewis, I'm a big fan, I'd pull the rope and they'd be covered in piss and then I'd spit on them. I'd say, don't come to my fucking house. But I guess that just means the Racker Boys are much better people than I am because they were lovely to anyone who showed up to the house. I don't know. I just feel like I would hate that. But I also I also don't film the outside of my house and put statues on the balcony of fucking Mike Tyson so you know exactly where I live either. So I guess that's a, it is a little bit different because, um, I don't know, but yeah, they do that. But see, 
the thing is though, it, the thirteen-year-old kids they would rock up and and I'd be like, oh, they're thirteen, they don't really get privacy, whatever. That's fine. They're just thirteen and they really want to meet their fucking idols. That's sweet. But one day, uh, someone knocks on the door. And it's like this grown adult, and he goes, Hey, mate, I've brought my grandson here. He really wants to meet the Racker Boys. And I'm, and I just thought, dude, if your fucking child, grandchild, the kid was pretty young, goes, Hey, dad, can you take me to a celebrity's house so I can meet them? Surely your adult brain should go, Oh, that's a bit fucked. I probably shouldn't do that. That's a bit of an invasion of privacy. I wouldn't like cunts rocking up to my house. Like, what kind of parent is like, yeah, all right, that's a great idea. Are they also the kind of people when, when their son goes, hey, dad, I reckon I'm going to put my hand in the fire. Do they go, yes, yeah, sweet, sounds like a good idea. Like, use your fucking adult brain. I could, that's, the, that's the only one where I couldn't believe the thought process behind it. 13-year-old kids, whatever, they're 13. But some fucking old cunt and a grown adult, like 40, 50 years old, taking his young grandchild to someone's house, a stranger. I don't know. That just fucking blows my mind. But they don't seem to mind, so I don't know why, why the fuck it pisses me off. You know, a- as usual, Lewis getting annoyed at shit that doesn't affect him in the slightest. Um, and also, while I'm at it, I'd like to give a quick shout out to Pulp Fiction Comics as well in Adelaide. What, my favorite comic book shop in Adelaide. I go there every time I'm in Adelaide. I pick up something. Um, one of the guys who worked there was a fan and hooked me up with some free shit. So I do appreciate that, man. Thank you. Shout out to Pulp Fiction Comics. Jeff, definitely check it out if you're in Adelaide. Dude, did you see all the all of the news about Donald Trump calling places a shithole and then denying it? So that so the story is during a meeting about whatever the fuck it was, immigration or some bullshit, I don't know, I haven't researched this, like everyone else, I've just seen the fucking tweets, <laughs> Trump goes, Trump says a bunch of countries where these people are coming from are shitholes, that's <laughs> the president, oh, every time he does something, I'm like, I just have to, I, I find it hilarious, and then I go, oh wait, he's the fucking president, is it funny, it's still funny, but it's also kind of concerning, <laughs> but yeah, so he calls these places shitholes. Um, so I don't want I don't want these pe- these people coming in from shithole countries, and of course everyone loses their mind. Oh, the president called these a racist and called them shitholes and blah blah blah. But the countries were never specified. So now what you have is all of the outraged people saying, like I've seen heaps of shit of like someone going, how can Trump say? that Haiti is a shithole. How dare he say Haiti is a shithole? Now, the, th- the whole thing with this is it was never specified which country he called a shithole. So all these offended people are, are, are going, oh, Trump called the country a shithole. He must mean Haiti. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, they're so outraged that he's called a country a shithole that they have just thought, oh, which country is a shithole? Oh, Haiti. How dare he call Haiti a shithole? Like, they're doing the same shit, but just but just from an offended point of view. And, and you know what gets me is, like, Trump's come out and he's gone, oh, he said he has never denied that he called them shitholes. He's just like, some strong language was used, but not that kind of strong language. And it's like, dude, don't even try it. You definitely called them shitholes. You absolutely did. Don't even try and deny it. Everyone that was at the meeting said, you called it a shithole. Just give that up, okay? Just say, yeah, he should have come out and said, yeah, I think I did call the country a shithole and these are the ones that I think are shitholes. Sorry. But don't don't try and tell me that the fucking dude who was yelling during his election campaign, take his jacket, get him out of here, take his coat. Like that, like you, that guy, didn't accidentally let slip that he thought a couple countries were fucking shitholes. You you definitely did that, man. (laughs) And I'm not angry about it. I'm just saying, come on, bro. I know you did it. We know you did it. Even 
the fucking Trump supporters know that he did it. One second. Right? So now I start seeing all of these tr- Donald Trump supporters like, like standing up for him by saying, oh, but these countries are shitholes and start pointing out countries that are fucking shitholes. And look, I'm not here to say that a bunch of third world countries in poverty that are war stricken, sure, a war stricken third world country definitely is a shithole. All right, that's how I would describe it. I mean, I I describe Frankston, which is just a lower economic suburb in Australia. I call that a shithole. One time I've been to a restaurant and they served me toast that was a little bit burnt and forever in my mind, that place is a shithole to me. So sure, let's say a bunch of third world war stricken countries are shitholes. So they're standing up for him by going, oh, he told the truth though. They are shitholes. But it's like, yeah, but do you really need the president calling other countries shitholes? <laughs> Like, is that, is that the best way to conduct your global politics policy? By describing any country that doesn't have money as a fucking shithole? <laughs> I don't know. It's just, I just think at this point, uh, Donald Trump just makes me laugh. Because he just, he's surrounded Clearly surrounded by people within his own office, but then outside of that circle, about maybe 60 or 70% of the country, everyone is yelling at him, change your behavior. And he just sits there, looks at 50 million people telling him, change your behavior every single day. And he goes, you know what? Fuck you. I do what I want. <laughs> and I respect it. Good on him. I mean, if that that's if that's how he wants to run his life, he's fucking 70. He's not changing. He hasn't changed for 50 years. He's not going to change just because he's the president. Fucking good on him. I hope he runs the country into the ground because you know what? It's kind of funny from over here. <laughs> um, What else has been going on? Sorry, I keep bumping the camera because it's on fucking charge. I hope that's not messing up the audio. Let me see if I can move this cord here. Ah, here we go. Right, this is a little bit better. Um, all right. Sorry if it's been making noise when I bump it. I think, I think I've just fixed it. Uh, what else has been going on? Oh, the live podcast. Um, episode 100, that is going to be the live podcast. Don't worry. It's not going to be happening in two weeks. We're struggling to find a venue. We are going to find something. We've been talking to a couple, but we're just trying to lock it in. It's definitely Brisbane. It's definitely 100 seats. It's just a matter of picking the right venue. I think I might have to do a couple of 99 point somethings, but um, yeah, don't freak out guys. Uh, It is going on sale. I will give you at least a week's notice. So I'm thinking maybe two or three, probably at least three weeks from now, they'll go on sale. And what I'll do is the week before they go on sale, I'm going to say, hey, next episode, they go on sale. Okay? So stop asking me. All you Brisbane cunts who want to come to episode 100, it's definitely happening and you will definitely be given notice. All right? So um, also, my uh, uh, my mixtape is all finished. The mixes have been sent to me. I haven't listened to it yet, but the guy who mixes it is the guy who did the first one, and uh, I think it'll come out really good. I think all of my beats are way better, and my bars and my flow is way better. So I'm thinking of when I'm going to release that. It'll probably be coming in the next couple of weeks, unless he's fucked up something major, which I highly doubt, because he never has done that. So yeah, mixtape will be coming out in a couple of weeks. And uh, I am... Sorry, I don't have too many things to talk about. All I did this week is uh, fly to Adelaide and film, film, film. Knocked out like six fucking videos in... F- well, well, really, collectively filmed probably maybe 15 or 20 videos in total uh, over the four days. But um, yeah, I didn't really do anything exciting. But that, you know, fucking... That's all I've done this week. So I don't have too much to talk about. But my apologies. I'm hoping that this week will be a little bit more exciting. Um, uh, update on the comedy special. I've been locked, um, 
a way I've, oh man, it's, I've, it's been the shittest fucking day. <laughs> uh, what I've done is I have watched, cause I have the, um, I have the full unedited version, unedited version of both nights. And what I'm doing is I'm going through and, and what I, what I had to do is sit down for like five hours and watch them back to back to pick which night I delivered which joke properly. And holy shit, nothing will make you hate your your voice more than watching like five minutes of a joke on a Friday and then going, all right, let's watch that joke on Saturday and then watching it again and then being like, oh, the punchline was better here, but the setup was better there. Maybe we'll use both of them and then going to the next one. And man, it was fucking tedious. But... Uh, I will be sending off the notes of which nights I want the takes from to the editor and then they'll get editing with that and then they'll choose the angles and then I come in and I pick what angles because I want I know how I want my jokes to be seen and that's how it'll come across. So yeah, that's the update with the comedy special. And uh, what else has been going on? Oh, I've got a new... Uh, my birthday. Fuck, my birthday's next week on Tuesday. January 16th is my birthday. I'll be turning 24, which is, is full-on adult male stats. Like, uh, I don't know. I've been looking around at my, my personal life and going, uh, fuck, there's a lot of things here. It's a personal... I mean, career-wise, I'm doing all right, but fuck, there's a lot of uh, personal life things that I don't know. Like, I don't know how to drive. Uh, I barely know how to operate a fucking dishwasher, but I've been, I've been palming it off being like, yeah, I don't need to know that shit. I'm only 23, but I think that's all going to come to a stop now. I mean, I'm 24. That's proper adult male shit. Like, like if I, if I vandalize something, I could go to jail, you know, like there's no more excuses, no more. Oh, he's just a young kid. I'm 24. I'm a man or I will be on Tuesday. Maybe I should vandalize something between now and then. Fuck vandalism's fun. I mean, don't do it. But if you're going to do it, fucking enjoy yourself. And do it, you know, while you're under 19. Once you hit once you hit the 20, you can't do that dumb misdemeanor shit. You'll actually get in trouble. If you Guys, don't vandalize. But if you are going to vandalize, do it before you're 20. Because it's, it's a fucking blast. I <laughs> uh, can't do that shit anymore. Um, so yeah, all these all these things like... All these life skills that I don't know. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm going to learn them. I'm, I'm just saying that I'm going to start feeling shitter about not knowing how to do them. I think that's, that's, that's where it's going to be. My self-esteem is going to take a real hit when I, when I realize I'm fucking 24 and I don't know how to wash. <laughs> I don't know how to wash the fucking dishes. Or clean a bath. Um, anyway, so uh, next week on Tuesday, I'm, I'm actually dropping a new comedy uh, series on YouTube. So it's something that I've been I've been trying to figure out for a while because I have Lou Review and I have Bi-Monthly Bull. And I love those two series, but both of them are so high effort for me to execute. I got to write, I got to research them. I need to write them and then I need to film them and then I need to edit them. And Bi-Monthly Bull especially is a fucking bitch to edit and write because there's so much research I need to do into the story and then I need to make it really, really punchy basically to make up for the fact that I don't have a studio audience because it's very easy to tell a fucking 6 out of 10 joke and then 50 people laugh and then you can pause. You can't do that when you're just sitting in a storage unit freezing your balls off. It just looks sad. <laughs> um, so I've been trying to come up with a series that is... Uh, for lack of a better word, low effort, but still high quality. And I think I've found it. So uh, I don't know if you remember a while ago, I, I dropped a video at randomly uh, building without instructions. And I built a computer without reading the instructions. And I essentially just jump cut the shit out of it. It was 100% ad lib. I fucked up the computer. It broke. And lots of people were like, please do more of these. This was fucking hilarious. Problem is, I can't just spend... Like, that That computer cost me $1,000, and then it cost me, like, $200 to, to fucking repair the damage that I did to it. So, it wasn't like I could um, do that every week. It's too, too expensive. So, I was racking my brains trying to figure out, well, what's a video like that that I can do 
because at the end of it, it comes out really high quality, but it's easy to film because it's it's just all ad lib. You don't need to have a writing thing. You just plan what you're going to make. And then editing is basically all jump cuts. And I was like, oh, and I've been thinking about it for months. And I realized, nah, not building without instructions, cooking without instructions. So starting on Tuesday, uh, there will be a new series, a new regular series on my YouTube channel, Cooking Without Instructions. It is where I, a 24-year-old man who has no idea how to cook, even with a recipe, attempts to cook something. So the rules are, I'm going to have a picture of the finished ingredient and I'm going to have a list of all of the ingredients. But I'm not going to know how many of how much of each ingredient so if for example the recipe is like you need two eggs i'm gonna have six so i have the opportunity to use too many eggs or too little eggs and uh, i make up the cooking as i go along i've already filmed episode one um i'm cooking a birthday cake and i think it came out fucking hilarious because i just fucked it i just fucked it but the process of it is really really funny um, I, and, and, uh, and the, what I'm going to do with those is because they're, they're low effort in terms of planning and writing, there is no planning, there is no lighting, writing. I just get someone else to buy the ingredients for me and I pick something to cook and then you just turn the camera on and fucking go easy. So I'm going to be filming two of those a week and then releasing them every couple of weeks in between Lure Review and Bi-Monthly Bull. The way I view it, it's like how iDubs does his unboxing videos, which are, you don't need to write them. You know what I mean? They're, they're fairly low effort in terms of writing and editing because it's just essentially reacting to whatever is happening at the moment and then jump cuts. Um, and then he has his content cops, which he spends heaps of time and effort on to make sure that it's perfect before it comes out. So that will save me from having to rush Lure Review and Buy Monthly Bull and it will save me from delaying a video. I can just put out a cooking video if that I have in the bank. So that's how I'm going to do my channel going forward because, I don't know, I realized that I needed to find a series like that because not the latest bi-monthly bull episode, I fucking loved. But the episode before that, I thought was really bad. Well, not bad, but it just could have been so much better. But I rushed the writing and I rushed the filming. And because of that, it just came out, I don't know, wrong. Because I think Bi-Monthly Bull is such a difficult series to execute as a one-man team. And it needs to be done right. And I need to, I think, I think I need to write it and then go over the script at least three times so that it's really punchy. And that ep episode, two episodes ago, I, re I, I wrote it. I didn't review it at all. I just filmed it and I rushed it. And uh, I really hated how it came out. So... And, and the reason why I did that was I was like, fuck, I just need to get a video out. And I don't ever want to rush bi-monthly bull or Lou review. So instead of, so basically what I'll do is I, if I have a Lou review, but it needs, you know, a little bit more editing or a little bit more whatever, and I can't get it out, instead, I, re I will release a cooking without instructions, which from filming the first episode is super easy to film and super easy to get to quite a high standard without fucking killing myself over it. So that's a new series that's starting on Tuesday. I'm really, really excited about it. I know I basically just told you it's a fucking low effort thing, but I honestly think it's going to be a hilarious series and it will sit up there with Lure Review and Bi-Monthly Bull. It's just behind the scenes. I'm not killing myself over it, which is, I think, something that I really, really needed. So yeah, this year is all about fucking content online and dropping the comedy special then going on tour no fancy shit just killing it all right so with that said let's get into um the worst part of the podcast miscellaneous bit at the end um all right so this one it's uh an email i was normally i do two questions but this girl sent me an email and then she sent me an update so i'm going to cover the email and then the update so um, if you would like to send a question into the Spearhead Sunday's podcast, if you need life advice, if you have a funny story, uh, if you've been a cunt to someone or vandalized something, whatever, just an interesting story or you need some advice with something, 
Uh, I would love to get them. I'm running a little bit low, so send an email to podcast at lewspears.com. That is podcast at lewspears.com. If you want to be anonymous, just change your name. Don't say my real name is this, but call me that. I will just read the whole fucking email. All right? Podcast at lewspears.com. Send me an email. All right. Uh, This email came through. The subject line was, I'm 19 and he's a 31-year-old man following me around the gym. Here we fucking go. Hey, Lewis. Love your content. I've been following you for years. Uh, Keep up the great work. Thank you very much. My name is Kate. Two weeks ago, I was at the gym working out when I noticed a guy just continually staring at me. I smiled at him and continued my workout in peace. There you fucked up, Kate. You fucked up. If a dude's staring at you in the gym, ladies, do not smile. Give that cunt a death stare. Any dude staring at a woman in a gym is a serial murderer. You don't do that shit. I mean, you want to. Don't get me wrong. You really really want to but you you should have this anyway anyone who doesn't have the self-control to be like oh i shouldn't stare at that girl's camel toe while she does leg lifts anyone who doesn't have that in their head is a psychopath because i'll tell you every time i go to the gym there is at least six girls that i would love to follow around watch them do the do the, the workout and then sniff the seat when they're done but i don't because I'm not a fucking creeper. I keep to myself. I look at myself in the mirror and I watch my form. I don't look at whatever the fuck Stacy's doing while she does those leg lifts where you can see her ass and it looks awesome. I don't look. Creepy as fuck. Any dude who looks is uh, a murderer. So Kate's probably dead by the time I get back to this email. Um, noticed a guy continually staring at me. I smiled at him and con- continued my workout in peace. Later on, while I was leaving, he approached me and we had a small chat. I thought he was nice, but I didn't put too much importance on the conversation. Well, I can fucking guarantee you, Kate, he did. (laughs) Because you have sent me six more paragraphs. Right. Fast forward a week and I hadn't been to the gym for a week due to gastro. Uh, I saw the guy again. His name is James. I politely smiled at him and went for my regular run on the treadmill. And he fucking stood behind you and sniffed your your leggings. Then I see him intently staring at me from the reflection of the TV. See, guys are fucking stupid. We think... Girls aren't stupid, alright? If I'm in the gym and I can see down a girl's top through two different rebounds of a mirror bouncing off the TV and then reflecting off some guy's, I don't know, protein shaker, I can guarantee you she's already done that before I have to look into my eyes to see if I can see down her top. So just don't, because they fucking know. All right? Um, He's intensely staring at me from the reflection of the TV. I thought he was going to leave me alone, but then he starts to approach me slowly. Oh, that's fucked while you're running. He gets onto the treadmill next to mine and starts chatting chatting to me again. Not wanting to be rude, I continue the conversation. It turns out we have quite a bit in common and everything was fine. Until I found out he was 31 years old. How did you not know? What is he? Do you reckon he's, he's been rubbing the elixir of life on his face? How did you not know he was 31? I tell him that I'm 19 and he doesn't seem to care at all. Yeah, no shit he doesn't care. He's probably fucking stoked. That's why he's staring at you through the reflection of the TV, Kate. Things take a weird turn as he proceeds to tell me that he knows my gym schedule. Oh, Kate's going to end up in the boot of a car. He knows exactly when I usually get to the gym and how long I'm on every machine for. See, that, that is the, that's the fucking murderer one. See, like, when you rock up to the gym, that could just be a coincidence. Maybe he gets to the gym at that time. But if he's fucking writing down your workout regime, I think he might be assessing how strong you are. Like, if you're on the treadmill, he's probably thinking to himself, well, fuck, she could probably outweigh me. And then if, she, if, he's, if he's watching you bench, he might be like, well, okay, so she's got good pecs. I'm going to have to tackle this bitch from behind. So she it, basically, if you're skipping leg day, he's going to come up and grab you by the legs. <laughs> um, 
For the rest of my workout, he's following me around and he doesn't even bother asking if it's okay if he joins me. The entire time he was making up excuses as to why we need to work out together and kept standing too close to me and watching me work out intensely as I'm doing weights. Ah, oh, that's fucked. Skipped yesterday and the same thing happens again even though I tried to avoid him by purposely working out between two out of order machines and he starts fucking jumping on them trying to repair them. Oh, I'll fix this while you do that so I can sniff your asshole. <coughs> Then, when we were in the weights area, I noticed him death staring any guy who was near us and shit talking other guys at the gym to me. Yeah, so this cunt thinks he's your gym boyfriend. Fucking hell. <clears throat> he also kept trying to show off by lifting really heavy barbells and found any excuse he had to touch me. Uh, I have no idea what to do, Lewis. I think I might have fucked up by being nice to him. No, Kate, you haven't fucked up by being nice to the guy. This dude's obviously a creep. I just didn't think he would want to be around an inexperienced 19-year-old girl. Did you Did you just hear? This, did you, I want you to read that sentence back, Kate, to yourself. It sounds like it came out of a porno. Oh, I didn't think you would want to be around an inexperienced 19-year-old girl. That is straight out of a fucking pornography. Of course he does. That's why he's around you, because he knows you're an inexperienced 19-year-old girl, because you don't know or have the confidence or social skills left yet to tell a 31-year-old adult male to, to fuck off and stop touching me while I'm using weights. I have no idea what to do. I think I fucked up by being nice to him. Um... I've never even had a boyfriend. I was bullied badly all my teen years and there's no way my first one should be 31. Are you considering this? He may be nice and we might have things in common, but he's too intense and more than a little creepy. Plus, I come from a traditional Greek family and my dad would absolutely kill him and then me if we even tried to date. So please help me. What do I say to him? How do I tell him no without pissing him off too much and having him turn into a stalker? Any advice will be greatly appreciated. Have a shit one, Kate. Kate, he's already a stalker. He's following you around the gym and touching you at any opportunity he can. He knows when you get to the gym. He knows your workout regime. He knows when you've been naughty. He knows when you've been nice. Santa Claus is going to rape you in the gym tonight. You need to fucking get away from this cunt. I would complain to management. Um... I would, right, Kate, this is what you do. You need, If he follows you around again, you need to tell him, hey, James, uh, I appreciate that you like me, but I'm only 19 and I would really appreciate if you stopped talking to me every time I came to the gym. I don't come to the gym to talk to other people. I come to work out. I'm sorry if you thought otherwise, but I'm only here to work out. It'd be really nice if you just let me work out in peace. And if he responds negatively to that, you go straight to the fucking gym management. <clears throat> Sorry. Like that. So you go up to him and you say that. You go, hey, uh, I appreciate that you're nice to me and you want to talk to me, whatever. But I don't come to gym to talk. I come to gym to work out. It'd be great if you could leave me alone. And then he'll say, oh, maybe we should hang out afterwards. You say, no, I'm really sorry. I don't want to hang out with you after. I just come here to work out. Sorry. And if he responds negatively to that, you go straight to the management and say, this guy follows me around. Check the cameras. And they will cancel his membership and you'll never see the cunt again. <clears throat> All right? So that is how I would have answered this first email. But now uh, I've got an update email. Kate uh, seems intent on digging her own grave. <clears throat> Sorry, I've got a cough. <coughs> Sorry, I'm back. All right. So, this is the update email. I'm 19, and he's 31 years old, following me around the gym. Update. Hey, Lou, it's Kate again. I think I've dug myself into an even bigger hole with my idiocy, idiotic idea. Call me an idiot all you want for this. I totally deserve it. Well, Kate, I'm glad you know, because you've really fucked up now. I had the stupid idea of adding him on Facebook. Why? 
So I could try to get the conversation to steer in the direction of relationships so I could tell him I'm not interested online instead of in person. Fuck. Kate. How the fuck? You know what you've done? Do you know what you've done? This is like... This is like a fucking zebra being like, Oh, I really hate that the lion stalks me. I think this guy wants to eat me. What I'll do is I'll go to the lion's den and I'll wait till he's biting on my leg and fucking eating my tendons. And that's when I'll say, Hey man, I really don't want you to eat me. I'm sure he'll understand. You're, you're going way further into this dude's trap. You want to steer the conversations to relationships. So what you've done, Kate, is you you added him on Facebook and then your plan was to go, hey, so do you have a girlfriend or are you single? And then he'll be like, oh, I'm fucking in here. And then, no, nah, you fucked up, Kate. But at least you know you fucked up. Um, lucky there's not nothing too personal on my Facebook. Uh, Okay, so I wanted to steer the steer the conversation in the direction of relationships so I could tell him that I'm not interested online instead of in person. However, I chickened out and we ended up having a normal conversation. Jesus Christ. See, you're th this girl, Kate, I don't want to bag you too much because it just seems like you're young and inexperienced, but this this shit is why we need laws like, like not to, to murder people. Because without those laws, Kate, I think you'd be fucked. Because <laughs> you're just walking into the trap. A serial killer's like, hey, come in here, come into my van. I'll fucking murder you. I've got a knife. I'll stab you in the ear and then I'll fuck, I'll fuck the corpse. And then you're like, oh, I'll just go in the van and maybe talk to him a little bit and hopefully he won't do that to me. It's like, these, this is why the laws exist. Because one... There are dudes as creepy as this guy who are going to do creepy shit to chicks. But then two, there are girls that just walk into the fucking trap every day. Like, oh, I'm sure he's kind of nice. I'm only 19. Hee <laughs> hee. Man. Uh, however, I chickened out. We ended up having a normal conversation. Well, not completely normal as I ended up finding out how immature he is. Completely incapable of holding an adult conversation for more than a minute. The whole time I wanted to pull my hair out and was on the brink of crying from boredom and disbelief. I mean, every time he, end, he ends a sentence with lol and he can't seem to continue a conversation unless I say something. I left him on scene for a while and it took him, and it took him ages to come up with something to say. Please help me. I'll, um, if I unfriend him, he'll notice, I'm sure. Have a shit one, Kate. Kate. Kate, you... I don't know. I can't help you. <laughs> it's, I feel like you're not going to listen to me. Oh, maybe you will. I don't know. Um, Yeah, you, you definitely fucked up. At least you know that you fucked up. Why did you add him on Facebook? That's only going to encourage him. Um, You need to... Well, now that you have his Facebook, you just need to message him and say, Hey, dude, whatever, you, whatever the fucking name is, James or whatever you said... Hey, James, uh, I'm sorry if I, because look, you haven't, you, you weren't giving him any signals until you added him on Facebook. Now that you've added him on Facebook, 100% he's thinking I'm in with a chance here. You've given him a giant signal without realizing. Dude, if I was flirting with a girl at the gym and she didn't really seem in, seemed interested, but then I went home and she added me on Facebook, I would think I'm going to fuck this girl for sure. She's interested in me because no girl adds a guy on Facebook so she can say, stop hitting on me. I would never think that. I would never be like, oh yeah, this girl that was flirting with me at the gym has added me on Facebook to tell me to stop flirting. I would never think that. So you've definitely given him a massive signal and I think you need to uh, really, really, really adjust his expectations and tell him the truth. You need to send him a message. Hey, James, I'm really sorry if I gave you the wrong signals, 
but I'm just not interested in you. I actually added you on Facebook. Just tell them the truth. I'm sorry if I gave you mixed signals, but I added you on Facebook to tell you that I'm not interested in you and I would really appreciate it if you um, stopped following me around the gym. I only go to the workout, not to talk to people. Sorry if I gave you the wrong impression. Just give it really nice. I'm not saying that you've done, you have given him the wrong impression in the gym, but he's obviously, he obviously thinks you've given him the impression that you're interested. So just cop that and to keep it polite and say, sorry if I gave you mixed signals or the wrong impression. I'm just not interested and I would really appreciate if I could work out in peace. Thank you very much though. Um, I'm going to delete you off Facebook because I keep my account very small. Hope you understand. And if he takes that negatively, you go straight to the gym management. That's my advice. Um, Kate, because you really fucked up with the Facebook thing, but it's not too late. Please... Don't let this guy think he has a chance with you by not saying anything because he's just going to keep going and it's just going to get worse. All right? That's the end of the podcast, guys. Thank you very much for listening. Next week will be a bit longer and I'll have uh, some shit to say because it'll be, uh, I don't know, uh, a more interesting week, I'm hoping. Um, also, it's my birthday on Tuesday, January 16. I don't know. I, I guess you'd like to fucking know that if you want to do a thing or send me a message or fucking, I don't know, whatever you want. All right, that's the end of the podcast. Thank you very much for listening. Thanks for watching on YouTube. Uh, if you want to support what I do, check me out on Patreon because every episode I upload, uh, the more expensive it gets to host it. So, And I don't want to delete episodes. So I cover the cost of that with Patreon and I cover the cost of the flights, flying to Adelaide, paying extras, paying camera people. All of that came from Patreon. Gives me a budget to do what I do for you. All right. Thanks you for listening. Thank you for watching. Kate, I would love an update and I would love some more uh, emails. Send me an email, podcast at loosebeers.com if you have a question or a story. And I will talk to you next Sunday. Have an incredibly fucking shit one.